All right, guys, UFC 252 is this Saturday night. We got a stacked card, and it is headlined by the trilogy. None other than Stipe Miocic versus Daniel Cormier 3. I could not be more excited for this matchup, Nick. My word. Let's break this, this card down. Let's give some predictions, and we want to know what you guys think. Let us know who you think is winning these fights. Yep, this is the this is the most important heavyweight matchup of all time, really. Absolutely, there's no question about it. And I think you know we put out a video last week, and we'll leave a link for that in the description if anybody wants to see it. For an argument to be made for the winner of this fight being the heavyweight goat, I think it's hard to argue against that. Yeah. Uh, but with that said. Who becomes the heavyweight goat on Saturday night? Oh, man. There's a lot to unpack, and there's a few things that hap- are, are going to be taking place in this matchup that you know weren't taking place in the last one, and I think that they will play a major role in this matchup. Uh, one, we can't not talk about the, uh, the ring size, the cage size. It's going to a 25-foot cage, not a 30-foot cage, right. which changes the... It, it does change the game plan. It changes the dynamic of a fight, and it does generally favor the wrestler, which DC is. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about uh, some of the really awesome fights right before the Octagon went to Fight Island and you mm-hmm. saw the uh, the really good knockouts that happened yeah. it, it was at the Apex, it seemed like it was fight after fight was a knockout yeah. because it's just not as much real estate to work with, and it does favor the wrestler. Uh, I am super excited for this. DC said this is it for him. This is his swan song. He's riding off into the sunset. And I just got to tell you, man, it just, I saw some training pictures with him and Cain Velasquez uh-huh. with the full gray beard. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just seems like the the gang's all, uh, even Luke Rockhold was there. It seems like the, the, the gang, the band's back together for one final tour, the, so to speak. And, and and the cool thing about that is they're soaking it in. They're, they're relishing in the moment. Yeah. You know, they're, Daniel's enjoying this. And usually when people come out and say, this is my last fight, they're, they've probably lost two or three in their past four or five fights, and they're you know they're just one of the guys now. Mm-hmm. Rarely do you see a guy go, look, I'm fighting for the heavyweight title or any title for that matter, and then I'm out. Yeah, win, lose, or draw, I'm out. So it's it's very intriguing, and you don't usually see fighters in the position that Daniel Cormier is in right now, where he knows it's his last camp, and it, it almost was like sad. Uh, I was watching the countdown, and his coach was like, you know. The, this is Daniel has his core group of guys, and this is probably the last time we'll all be together. Just you know, just the gang. Yeah, uh, and definitely will be the last time we're we're together training for an for, event like this. So, yeah. it it was kind of sad to see, but but at the same time, they're enjoying the whole the, all the steps that they have to go through. Absolutely, and and I think for for that reason, he's enjoying this. He's got. I mean, who who better to train with than Cain Velasquez, who arguably. Would you know when we put the uh, the quote we posed the question last week? Who's the heavyweight goat? There was uh, one comment uh, from Korean British shout out to you uh, that said um, uh, he always drops awesome oh, comments. Man. So so anyway, shout out, yeah yeah for sure. That in his opinion it would have been an injury free Kane, mm-hmm. and that's hard to, to disagree with. Yeah uh, for sure. For but sure. anyways, Kane is is uh re- you know he's he's training with him. He's training with Rock Cold. It feels good. I think DC knows what he needs to do to win this fight, and it's to wrestle. Mm -hmm. He's going to use his wrestling. He's going to play. He's going to stick to a very smart game plan. DC's fight IQ is through the roof, and I just my gut is just telling me that DC is going to win this fight. Yeah, I I think you know he he said something in the countdown. He goes, "I just want to win. I I don't care. I just want to win." And that's the mentality of somebody who knows what game plan will work. Obviously, he can put his wrestling on anybody in the world. He can implement a game a game plan and make it work with his wrestling against any human on the planet. Yep. And and Stipe is no different. Stipe is a stud wrestler, and they're gonna there's gonna be some fun exchanges. But I do see Cormier go into what got him got him to the UFC, got him that championship belt, took him in to the, the Olympics, place. took him to the Olympics, and that's some wrestling. And, you know, he he walked in and was out striking Stipe in the first in the first two matches. Yeah. I'm, I mean, he obviously won the first one quick. The second one, I had him up in the first three rounds and, and it was all striking pretty much. I think DC has won most of their rounds. Yeah. He, he was finished in the second fight, but in most of the rounds that he has fought Stipe, he's won the majority of the rounds. Yeah. And that that's without pulling the wrestling tool out of his bag. So yeah. And Ben Askren was interviewing him today and he, he Ben Askren, you know, Ben's always funny. He mm-hmm. goes, 
you, you DC, I do hope you know that you can you can wrestle him at any moment that you want to, right? Yeah. You can take him down at any time you want to. Yeah. And Stipe, you know, I'm not going to take away anything from Stipe here. He's arguably the best heavyweight of all time, and he does have good wrestling takedown defense, and he's got incredible boxing. Right. And those body shots are no joke. DC cannot absorb too many of those. But mm-hmm. I think DC is going to fight a smart fight. He's going to use his experience. Uh, you know, it's back to the old Johnny drama quote. Mm-hmm. You might have a couple pounds or a couple inches on me, uh, but nothing outweighs experience. Yeah. And when, when DC's uh, back is against the wall and he knows this is his last outing and he's such a competitor and he wants to win so badly, uh, I think he's going to, I think he's going to get it done. Yeah. And, and the narrative uh, a, a couple weeks ago was with the Darren Till versus Robert Whitaker fight was, uh, you saw memes all over the the we're we're super sad that one of these guys has to lose. I couldn't feel more the same similar, way. Yeah. yeah, more the more the same way about this fight. I hate that one of these guys has to lose, and it, you know it it really will define their careers and and kind of seal them up in one way or another. If D, if DC wins, he's the goat. If Stipe wins, definitely the goat. I mean, he pretty much is already. So and, and DC's already said that he goes look. Stipe is the goat in the heavyweight division, but if I beat him, I'm the goat. That's that's the way this works. Uh, we, you know, this is the rubber match, and we have to see who's better. And so I think, yeah, like you said, uh, Stipe or Daniel's going to implement that wrestling. He's going to bring what got you know he's going to bring his tools, all the tools that got him to the UFC and into the championships in the first place. And uh, and he's gonna leave nothing in that cage. He's just gonna he's just gonna. So you pick in DC? Yeah, yeah, I'm picking DC, and I, it's hard to pick against Stipe, but uh, yeah, I I just see this fight. I see him sticking to a game plan. I see more ways for DC to win this fight than for Stipe to win yeah. this fight. Stipe, I think, I think he's got to get the body boxing going if he's yeah. gonna have any chance of winning this fight. Yeah, I, and I I think that he'll definitely come with some kicks and stuff to the body to and and try to fight a long fight. But you can't stop DC from taking you down if he wants you on the ground. And I think DC is going to fight a smart game plan and, and take it to the ground. Yep. Well, let's talk about some fighters that are not even discussing retirement at the moment. How yeah. about that, that co-main event? Also, an awesome fight that I'm yeah. looking forward to. We got Sugar Sean, yeah, Sean Sugar O'Malley Sean, yeah. versus uh, Marlon Vera. Is that, I believe that's how you yeah, say his yeah. name. Chito yeah, Vera, yeah. Chito Vera, yeah. Chito Vera, yeah. How do you see this one playing out? Well, you know, the, these two, I think at the, originally they were kind of at the, they were like the curtain jerkers of the main event, of the main card. And then Dana realizes the star power that Sean O'Malley has and threw him right up in the co-main event. And I, and I think they deserve it. Yeah. And Cheeto Vera is, is no slouch. They're, you know, people always go, I want to see Sean O'Malley get tested. And he's not getting tested. He's fought some tough opponents. None as tough as Cheeto Vera. But he's fought already some tough guys, and this one's going to be a true test. Cheeto Vera's never been stopped uh, in the UFC, never been dropped in the UFC, never been finished. And um, and O'Malley, obviously he, he's coming in undefeated, but Cheeto Vera is, is nobody's punk. And pe- right. people don't think that, you know, Dana's just giving him li- like weak guy after weak guy. Cheeto Vera is a, is a game competitor. It's one of those fights where we all know that Sean O'Malley is a star and he's got right. star power and the UFC, I think, is grooming him in a very appropriate way. But this is one of those ones where if he solidifies this win, the UFC is not going to be able or sorry, not the UFC people in general, the casuals and the, and the diehards are not going to be able to say that, oh, this O'Malley guy, he's just all hype or yeah. he's, you know, they're feeding him punk. That, that's the, the always the narrative when you're building a guy up. Same with comes at Chimaev. Yeah. You know, when we broke his video down, we had people say in the comments that, oh, he fought bums. It was like, you can only fight who's in front of you. Right. And when you outland them 200 strikes to two, right. you can't help but you know give a guy credit for that. Now, I think Sean O'Malley has been largely the same way. He's, he's defeated everybody that's been put in front of him. Mm-hmm. He's given us some excellent finishes. But I think this one solidifies him as not being anybody's joke anymore. Yeah, he's got the funny looking hair. Right. You know, he does his thing. He's a little different, kind of acts like a hippie. But if he gets this knockout... Or, or this finish, or even just a win, he's for real. It's all and for I do races. think he gets it done. I think he, I think he gets it done. And I'll add one more. I think he's the first person to finish Vera. Really, you think I do? You, I think he's going to get. I don't think it's going to be easy. I think Sean is going to sh- also show in this fight that he's got a good chin. Yeah. Because I think Sean's going to take some shots in this yeah. fight. I don't think Sean's going to walk through this with just that, you know, you know, faint, faint, boom, just a quick knockout sort right. of 
thing where he doesn't take much damage. I think Sean O'Malley is going to be beaten up in this fight, but I think he also does more beating up then mm-hmm. he, he's more of on the on the giving end than the receiving end of the beat up. Yeah, but I and I think he gets it done by stoppage. But I think it's in the second or third. Yeah, uh, you know Tito Vera, he's he's come out and said, look, I know, I know the guy I'm fighting is one of these stars and the in the UFC's grooming him, but I'm coming to steal that thunder. Yeah. And I do think that if he can beat Sean O'Malley, all the eyes are on him, right? Yeah, Sean, he's the co-main event. When you're now. in there with Sean O'Malley, the eyes are just like they're on him. They're on you too, and. uh He's a tough dude. He's I think he's actually marketable as well. I don't I wouldn't say he's as marketable as Sean O'Malley because Sean is doing everything right in my opinion. He's yeah. doing he's he's taking all the appropriate steps to becoming a star. And, including not rushing his career too, which I yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely not rushing it, but if you beat Cheeto Vera, there's no going back. You're in no. the deep end now. You're yeah. you're playing with the big boys, and I, I Sean's not the one that's trying to run from them or anything. The UFC is just trying to make sure that he takes the right route. I'm not saying the right. easy route, but the right route to the top five. Top and when 10. he and for when he takes that title fight, if mm-hmm. he continues to win, because that's it's, everything is predicated on that. If he continues to win, he's properly groomed and he's a big enough star to make that title fight. A huge fight um so but I'm, so, I'm picking sean so yeah, yeah so I, I also am picking sean um i think i think it's gonna I, like you said it's gonna be a hard fought fight and he's gonna gain a lot of experience in this one so yep. three i think i think he i think there is gonna be a finish because these guys are so explosive but uh i i think maybe a later stoppage for for sean o'malley okay yeah, yeah. so but he's gonna get he's he's not gonna uh just walk through this one he's gonna have to earn it yep Absolutely. So we're 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 the same. So even even down to how it happens so far. So yeah, let's let's see if that that streak can finish because this uh, the main event's not the only great heavyweight fight on this card. We yeah. also have Rosenstrike versus the always dangerous Junior Dos Santos. Have you seen Have you seen how powerful his mustache is right now? Dos Santos. Oh boy. No, I need to see this. No, yeah. Okay, so he looks like a million bucks. His 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 body. He's got abs. He's shredded okay. muscles all over the place and he's got this killer stash the so, john anik stash yeah uh, more a little more powerful than john anik <laughs> but um but yeah he looks great i think it's a cool look for him because he's such a scary guy you know because of his size and stuff like that but he has this great mustache and uh man what a tough opponent he's got jarzinho rosenstrike yeah you know this is a really exciting fight Rosenstrike is a very explosive fighter. Uh, JDS is a seasoned veteran. He's got some of the best boxing in the game. Uh, Rosenstrike's going to have to be very careful when he explodes with some of these exchanges mm-hmm. because JDS will be looking to counter. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you can ask Kane Velasquez what happens uh, if JDS gets off a good punch on yeah. you. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's... Uh, it's it's something that Jade uh, that Rosenstrike I think he can win the fight but I think he's going to have to really fight almost a perfect fight to beat this true veteran. Yeah, so the only thing that worries me about uh Junior Dos Santos and I, he's le- legit one of my favorite fighters of all time. Just yeah. so so great for the sport. Walks out to Rocky music. How can you not like that? And uh but but in the heavyweight division you take as many shots as somebody like him has uh, and your chin just starts to go you know, Rosenstrike has shown us that he can knock you out in the last five seconds, and he knocked out Alistair Overeem, split his lip. That was like one of the grossest things I've ever seen in yeah. MMA, and that was within like the last minute of the fight. So like the, literally, almost like the last second. It was yeah. crazy. And I and I, I'm remembering correctly, that was a five rounder. Yes, it was a five yeah, rounder because yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the main yeah. event. So he was starting to look a little bit gassed, and still had the knockout power at the end of the fifth round in a three round fight. He's gonna have that power and gas for the entire fight, and I, I don't. This is where we might differ. It sounds like you might be going with Sigano for to win this one. I'm gonna go with Rosenstrike, and I think it's gonna actually be uh, a first round knockout. Unfortunately, because okay. I love Junior Dos Santos, but I have to just go with what I think is gonna happen. Yeah, you know, I, and I, I've gone back and forth on this one. Um, and I wasn't even saying that to necessarily say that I'm going to pick Junior. This is the hardest fight on the card for me to pick because yeah. I just don't know what's going to happen. And it's the heavyweight division and anything can happen, right. really. Um, I don't even know who the underdog is. I, I don't either. We should we should look that up. I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick Junior to get it done. Okay. I'm going to pick Junior to take Rosenstrike into later rounds, keep himself safe, and, and wear him out. Probably... Yeah. 
decision win. Decision, decision win by JDS or late stoppage. But if it is a stoppage, it's late. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I hope you're right because I love, I love Junior Dos Santos. And how cool would it be if he makes another run? But um, Rosenstrike just seems like one of those guys that – the, he's tough. He's he, tough he can to shut the lights him. out in one shot. So if you shut Alistair Overeem's lights off, yeah. you know, right at the end of the fight, that's uh, yeah, you can shut anybody's lights off. So absolutely. Who we got next? Uh, next up is we got uh, John uh, Magic, the magician, John Dodson, and okay. Murab Devosfoli. I'm I'm probably messing that up bad. Mar- Murab Davilishvili. Da- <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's right. Might, I might need to auto correct yeah. that one. You know, but, John um, Dodson is one of those fighters to me that his, like when you talk about the 125ers back in the day when he was in, at 25 that was bouncing around. Yeah. He's literally like a rabbit in there. He, like, the magician is such a good name for him because yeah. he's like here and then he's there and he's there and then he's here and he's like yeah. bam, bam, bam. He hits you with a, with a punch combo. It's weird to me that he was never really able to ascend higher than he did. You know, I know he had. Uh, suffered some some tough losses at the highest of levels at 125, but uh, I think I think he's probably uh, going to going to get this one done. What do you think? Yeah, well, he has a lot more experience than his opponent, and I don't know a ton about his opponent, so um, he seems like a scary Russian. Uh, 11 and four versus 22 and 11, so it's it's hard for me to say. I really don't know, and I I will predict that his opponent wins just because. He seems like a younger guy that's coming up, and maybe they want to build him off of John Dotson's name. And I also like to bet against you sometimes. So, <laughs> well, you, they have John. They have been using John kind of as a stepping stone right. fighter uh, as of late at the 135 division. So, which is a tough night out for everybody. Yeah, but it, it's it's not a. Um, yeah, it's it's something that yeah, John is is no walk in the park for anybody. He's got a great skill set. He's an explosive striker, and he moves in very unorthodox ways. And he, for a small guy, he covers a lot of ground. Yeah, for sure, that's so, a great way to put it. He he covers a lot of ground. I think I, I'll go against you on this one. I think Dodson gets this one done. Very nice. And and starting the main card, um, we have a very strange fight, and it's it's a rematch. And it's from it's between Ion Qtilaba, mm-hmm. the I think he's like a Venezuelan guy, okay, versus Magomed Ankel Ankelev. This is the one where the guy was like rope doping. He and was, they stopped yeah. the fight. Right? He was like playing possum and like acting like he was knocked out, and the ref stopped it. And we had a big controversy that night when we were watching at the house. Half of the room thought that oh god, thank god the ref stopped it because it looked like that guy was just on Queer Street, and uh, the other room. Part of the room was like, no, I, I think he was just playing possum. We couldn't really tell. But um, the the referee's job is to keep fighters safe. And when when somebody makes faces like he was making and wobbling like that, uh, he's either the best possum player in the world or he was actually yeah. really rocked. But when it comes down to like half of us in the room, all of whom are, are you know, avid MMA fans, can't even tell. Right then you can't blame the referee for stopping it because we went back and watched and watched and right. watched. And then you can debate. But if you're in the heat of the moment as the referee standing in the cage just yeah. a couple feet from two guys and you see somebody doing that, you don't have the luxury of going back and, and seeing watch that, re- it watching it 10 times. You have to make a decision. And the first and most important job that you have is keeping the fighters safe. So, you know, uh, I think you bottom line is you can't do anything in the octagon that would make it look like you're right. stop, you know we've had some issues in the past with verbal taps people mm-hmm. screaming and then the ref stopping the fight and they say hey it wasn't a tap well why did what were you screaming for you know what i mean like right. there's there's certain things that you just have to avoid if you want to just make sure that you get the result that you want and one of them is pretending like you're hurt if yeah. you're not so um, I think it's going to yeah. be a very exciting matchup because they, you know these two guys are very explosive fighters and uh, there's obviously a chip on QT Laba's um, shoulder because he got stopped early from that whole th- situation. Uh, I think he's going to try to come in and, and get a finish. And prove, I think he gets it. Yeah, you think he does? Yeah, what do you think? I think he I'm, I'm going to go with the with his opponent. Uh, okay. Ma- yeah, yeah, Magomed. Yeah, Magomed Ankalov. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun fight. I think it's going to go a lot further further than the first one. I think maybe we could, we see a decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's so from the top we both picked DC yep. in the main. Uh, we picked Sean O'Malley in the co-main. Yep. We picked um, you picked Rosenstrike. I picked JDS. Right. You uh, got Dodson. I, I've got Dodson. I've You've got, got his got opponent. His, I won't say his name. Yep. And then uh, in the rematch, I'm uh, going to go with you. Can go with QT Laba, yep. and I'm going to go with uh, Magomed. 
Okay. All yeah. right, that's it, guys. Let us know who you agree with, who you disagree with. Yeah. Let us know how you think these fights are going to play out. We're super excited for this trilogy fight. This is one of the fights that Nick and I have just had marked on the calendar for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. This is like even longer than that. Last couple of months. This is going to be an amazing, amazing yeah. fight. This is history, guys. And this if is true heavyweight history. And if you're a casual or you you know you don't usually watch, get to get a popcorn. Get a drink and watch Buy this. This, this is Daniel yeah. Cormier's last fight, and it's something we all need to witness. So enjoy. And guys, please, as always, make sure to check us out on the podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and on these videos. If you like what you heard, please like, comment, like, and comment subscribe. subscribe. It helps us out a ton. And thank yeah. you all so much for listening. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the fights.